Hey guys, it's Ross, and today I want to talk to you about uh, my season, my 2018 season, and kind of go about it in review. I want to give you guys a quick tour and talk about each individual thing that I think is uh, pretty important. My biggest successes and my biggest failures of this year. Uh, you know, the figs were a huge success this year. I had a very nice growing season. I got to taste probably close to uh, 80 to 100 varieties this year. Uh, more if you count from friends and um, different places I went. But for my own trees, I probably got about 80 to 100 varieties. Um, some One of my biggest failures this year was my Rasmataz grape. And I think uh, I've just learned that Muscadines are a late season grape. You know, it goes gooseberries first here, and then European grapes, and then Muscadine grapes. So uh, the Muscadine grape is actually kind of ripening too late and this I think Rasmataz is one of them that doesn't ripen in time I did get to try one single grape that was halfway decent and it had some pretty good flavor but there's a couple reasons why I'm not a huge fan of this uh, this vine and we've we've talked about that previously but I think the biggest reason is that it's just a later ripening muscadine and we're gonna put in Back in over here in this corner, we're actually going to put some muscadines in the ground that are supposed to be hardy to zone 6. So we'll see if they can actually ripen here and do well with our cold. Another big disappointment was the che tree. It was completely loaded with fruit. This is a female che, and uh, I'm going to give it one more year. And if it doesn't fruit next year, I'm going to get rid of it. I think... I doubt that there was a nutrient deficiency. I mean, look how perfect these leaves are. I've fertilized this tree heavily, given it just about every micronutrient and thing you could think of. So the only thing that's left is potentially the water. And putting a lot of my pears and my stone fruits and my jujubes, my apples, they're going to be on a separate line from the figs because the figs just need a lot less water than these guys do. Another big failure I guess or disappointment this year was the jujube crop and we did do a video on this we did get a nice bowl of jujubes but nothing like I was expecting um, I know that they're an if you're less reliable fruit even though nothing bothers them you know some years they bear well and some years they don't but because they're in containers they should do much better here and for whatever reason I think there may be some kind of pollination issue Something was knocking off the smaller jujubes after they had set back in like August. You know, I don't know. We'll see what happens next year with them. But uh, pretty disappointed with those. Some other things that just a general statement about what went on in this backyard. Uh, particularly my apples and my pears and, you know, the other apples over here and the, the peaches. You know, all these things kind of got ravaged by the birds this year and we did protect them with organza bags but it was almost too late and if you let the the critters in your your yard or your area you let them know that there's fruits on these trees they're going to keep coming back and they're not going to stop until it's all gone and in a lot of cases they're not going to wait until the fruits are perfect so i had some squirrels that were taking off apples off of my trees well before they were in their prime taking them off the trees and then bringing them over to my bed over here which I had some potatoes in we dug up the potatoes and what did I find <laughs> unripe apples so you know it's uh, it's really disappointing but we're gonna have to find ways to protect our fruits better um, and you know next year I'm sure I should be swimming in some apples swimming in stone fruits and pears you know um, my grapevines my European grapevines are a bit of a disappointment for, for me this year. Um, you know, last year I got some really high quality grapes that were so ripe that they had honey leaking from them. I'm not even kidding. We dried some into raisins and you could see the congealed honey. This year we had uh, a lot more grapes, which was great to see. We also lost a grapevine. We're going to be planting a new one here called Everest Seedless that I've talked about on Facebook and Instagram. But um, this year we got plagued by black rot pretty hard. And the black rot 
Um, you can kind of see it on the leaves here. I mean, this is probably some other things that are going on as well, but you know, the, the black rot infects the fruits and it's really not good uh, when that happens because the fruit just becomes inedible. So what we're doing this year is we're actually gonna spray with an inorganic spray. Uh, yes, I know it's inorganic, but um, it really does wonders for black rot. It's called Spectricide Immunox. Again, we've also talked about this on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Um, and that will completely get rid of the disease. And I'll do that once a year when the new growth is one foot in length in the spring. And that's, that's it. So we'll wipe out the disease. But the other thing we have to worry about is the birds as well because the cat birds in my backyard are insane. So we need to bag the fruits as well and we need to bag them before they're even close to being ripe. So we'll spray them as soon as they break bud, one foot of new growth, and then we'll bag them as soon as the clusters of fruit form and we should be good to go. Um, that's kind of it for this side of the yard. I want to show you guys some other things that I think are, you know, there's a lot of things that have been planted in here. We've talked about at great length. You can go back and watch me planting a lot of this stuff here, persimmons and pears and kiwi and plums and, you know, lots of persimmons actually. But I think the only thing I want to mention in this corner is the pawpaws. And the pawpaw did in fact grow pretty decently this, well, this year. But the problem I'm seeing is that they really only put out a nice spurt of growth in the beginning of the year and that's it. They're done. Um, kind of like the honeyberry where people kind of worry about their honeyberries because they look pretty sad for most of the year. But that's just what they do. They don't really grow for most of the year. They only put out a nice growth spurt in the beginning and that's it. So, you know, I'm hoping next year the pawpaws will be the the winner of my yard <laughs> I don't know these trees some of them take quite a long time maybe I should plant the che in the ground maybe I should plant some jujubes in the ground you know it is what it is but here is my cherry trees and this is another thing I want to mention the cherries did fruit for me this year and I got to taste some really uh, incredible cherries just growing in my backyard I'm I was very shocked I would say that the fruit quality of my cherries is about average to the grocery store I think the the cherry orchards out there they can definitely get some high quality fruit uh, much easier than you know just as good as I can so this is not really something I think is too much worth growing in your backyard but um, these trees will do well next year we're gonna raise the canopy a bit higher because there is a deer that comes back in here um, and loves to eat my cherry trees so we will in fact you know unfortunate this limb here has some nice buds on it these these spur buds here that will fruit for me next year there's one cluster here two clusters three clusters you know four five six seven seven clusters of cherries but we need to get rid of this branch so unfortunate but it is what it is um, if we go over here I'm going to show you guys my other parts of the yard. Uh, one thing that was a huge success, and it is every year, is the strawberries. An unbelievable success. My varieties Early Glow and Mar de Bois do exceptionally well here. We've planted a lot of them throughout the yard because I love them so much in other places now. But these are a big hit here. They're probably the most reliable, tasty thing I have a uh, problem free thing I have I mean they're just a no-brainer another big success was the raspberries and I think this is number two for my yard Caroline specifically Caroline red raspberry we were pretty much done fruiting because I've cut off all the clusters of fruit to prep them for the winter time uh, but these guys fruit all the way up until frost if I let them and they'll fruit from basically sometime in June all the way to the end of the year. Similar to um, my strawberries. And I really love Caroline. I really love the raspberries. They're number two overall for just reliability, productivity. Something that is a bit disappointing is my blackberries this year. Last year they got hit with a lot of SWD and they kind of ripened at a period in which 
it was like peak SWD season in my backyard and that didn't happen this year um, and I only relied on the second crop of blackberries this is a special variety that produces uh, blackberries on primacanes the second crop called Primark Freedom very tasty berries large berries you can see there's a cluster back here of fruiting we're actually at Halloween right now but uh, you know a lot of these clusters I've, I've cut them off unfortunately I can't really show you guys but there's a lot of clusters that were on these vines or these brambles here that really just would not ripen in time um, I did get some decent amount of blackberries but off of one plant I was pretty disappointed of how late they were and um, you know there's gonna be some new strategies I'm gonna have to put in play of how to tip these guys similar to pinching you can tip your blackberries and I've done that this year but I think my technique needs to be refined a bit so overall a bit disappointed but here is my per, um, my mulberry and it's huge um, very disappointed with this as well just for the simple fact that uh, it's very difficult to protect the berries from the birds if you were to net this it's impossible because the new canes grew I mean they grew about a foot a week I haven't measured this out here from that point all the way up to there I don't know what that is but it's a bit ridiculous and they just grow right through the net and you basically end up tearing up your net every year this persimmon was supposed to be my star this year but last year the thing fell over on its side it's a very windy location we're in and I wasn't expecting I guess too much but I was expecting something we didn't get anything from this tree but I did get some very tasty persimmons which I did a video on maybe it may or may not have been published yet but um, we did a video on that persimmon so we did get to taste some persimmons this year my apple trees in this location grew well I guess you know you could say even though some of this stuff didn't fruit they grew exceptionally well these are apple trees I grafted from rootstock on their own very very good uh, growth that I've been getting off of these even though they've been dwarf I think the comfrey has a lot to do with it. A lot of organic material that I dump on this location. The same thing with the persimmon here. This is Rosianca and the Illinois Everbearing Mulberry. They just grow so, so well because of the mulch and the organic matter that I just keep adding to this location. Um, you know, those are kind of the big ones, guys. We did get a crop of blueberries. It was a bit low. Um, you know, we got a nice crop of strawberries. Um, the in-ground figs, guys, didn't perform nearly as well as I had hoped. But this was going to be, I knew going into this year, a bit of a building year. Trying to raise the, the root zone of these plants. You can see these are new plantings here of figs. And I've purposely raised the root zone of these plants a bit higher. That way they can get more access to heat and hopefully grow. Um, a lot better that way so that is pretty much the video guys um, those are the big successes and the big failures for me this year there's nothing that seems like that beats these fig trees so far so even though I live in Pennsylvania a place where um, you're not really supposed to be able to grow fig trees it's quite cold here short season um, nothing really beats the figs and you know uh, it just is a testament to how easy it is to grow figs so anyway guys thank you so much for watching um, hopefully you enjoyed this little video and you guys learned something about my failures uh, I know it's important to share my failures so it's exactly what I'm trying to do here um, you guys can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter now um, I like to post a lot of interesting things over there if you haven't already, please go follow me and please follow me on this channel and give this video a thumbs up. It really does help. Anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much again for watching. I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.